Hello everyone, welcome to From the Void Podcast, a show all about Eternal and our experiences with the game. I'm Navalis, and with me, as always, is Bassoon. Bassoon, how are you, sir? Good morning, dads and moms. I am here. I'm a little low energy today. I'm not sure why, but um, I'm I'm still ha- I'm just as happy to be here as I always have been, and I lo- and, and I love you like the the sons and daughters that you all are to me. Awesome, awesome. Now, Bassoon, now we we have. <laughs> We hope your energy picks up a little bit as we do some uh, some conversations. Tea we might, should help. We we might the, the, the what is it the uh, ginger green tea you're drinking? You told mm, me? Ginger green tea. Yeah, oh, sounds really good. Um, but hopefully our topic will get your your blood flowing and uh, it might it might get you uh, to uh, say a few words. I'm sure it will. You, but you know who gets my blood flowing? Who's that? Who's that? My good friend Enrosh Uno. <laughs> Ooh. Another ginger, by the way. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I actually don't understand why that was relevant. <laughs> well, you were talking about your ginger tea. Oh! <laughs> you got me, dude. I, do- I told you today is a low-energy, slow slow roll day. Uh, uh-huh. The stream is, is currently buffering yeah, for I'm, me, by you, the way. You lead it. Talk about it bassoon. I'm gonna take care of the stream because my. All right. While is... we're on fire, I will talk to my good friend Enrosh. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I found out I've been uh, mispronouncing your name right before the show, and I and I have been mispronouncing it during the show. It's it's uh, fine. It's no Roush. big deal. Yep. Rouch like ouch, but with an sh <laughs> at the end. And rouch like ouch. <laughs> yep. But with but with an sh and not a ch. That's how I always tell people, and you know what? It works every time. Everyone everyone understands what I mean when I say that. <laughs> Oh, that's so hot. Um, what a good what a good name. All right. Um, okay, so while we get set up for the um, the internet, you okay over there, Navalis? I'll keep going. It's just my internet's being crap this morning. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead, yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's uh, talk gonna... about... What, what were you going to say? I was going to say, how was your week in Eternal? Bassoon? We'll just go with the thing as I, I, can, I can multicast, I think. So how was your week right. in Eternal? My week in Eternal was pretty good. <laughs> um, I uh, I spent the week on my stream just like uh, metagaming around all the nerfs, like playing. I thought all the nerfs would kind of, at least in the first week, lend itself to a meta of people p- trying to play the biggest, dumbest units possible. Um, and so I thought that Canadians was the perfect deck into that format. And I was rewarded for that thinking. I got top eight at the ETS. Um, but, uh, yeah, since then, my luck and skill has been plummeting precipitously, and I lost, um, games at an alarming rate on my stream yesterday. Literally, like, a. Like lot win loss record was like a one to three ratio. It was insane. So I I no longer know what's happening in the game. I'm back to being the idiot that you always thought I was. Um, how about you and and Rouch? Uh, well, my ranked experiences this week has been pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> tanked tanked about uh, I don't know three hundred ranks or so in uh, in Eternal. But but uh, I've been playing the sealed league and that's been going really well. So through week. Through week three, I was top ten, and we'll see what happens mm. uh, with the new packs. So that that was going really, really well. Cool. cool I cool. have stopped buying into sealed. I don't. I don't like it very much. Just don't enjoy playing limited. Well, you're not a drafter either, so yeah. I just don't like limited formats. I That's don't know. Fair. <laughs> it, I like, maybe it like goes to back, each their own. <laughs> maybe it goes back to a conversation we were having off stream about uh about. I, I like having like a little bit more information about what mm-hmm. my opponent could be doing, and so when I see like the turn one, like when I see the colors of the deck in in constructed, and I see like the turn one Oni Ronin or whatever, I I can narrow down the list yeah. to like four or five different decks. You you know exactly, but in limited, where like you see colors and the the range of cards your component could have is is just much much bigger. Whereas I like see I enjoy limited. And I like figuring that stuff out. I don't like. You know, I like figuring out what what cards my opponent could have, what all the different combat tricks and things I need to play around there. That's that's more fun to me, and just knowing exactly what you know what your opponent has going on right from the get go. Yeah, that makes I, sense. Yeah, I enjoy league a little bit more than draft, just because I don't know it's just 
I, can't I mean, by the end of League, <laughs> Sealed is just... By the end of Sealed, the end of the month, Sealed is just mega draft, right? It's just yeah. like... And yeah, everyone's decks are super busted. Everyone's got insane cards going on. Except they are, me. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, usually by the end of the Sealed, everyone's decks are, are very, very good. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, my, my week, I got I hit Masters last week. I was doing it with uh, basically FJS, uh, Winchest. It was it's just... I was trying other things. I was trying some aggro, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna play good stuff, and and then I eventually climbed. So uh, that then I just been messing around and and uh, around, I guess, 1,000 rank in masters. Just whatever catches my eye, I will try that type of thing. So nothing going on there. But haven't had a lot of time to play this week. Been really busy, but it's been a good week. I've enjoyed internal. I'm still enjoying it. Uh, enjoying interacting with opponents. I. I, I need to make in our Discord, uh, basically uh, interesting or funny like uh, game tags from your opponents because I've had quite a few this past week that I've just like read and just shake my head like, really, really. And so anyway, so we'll make we'll make a channel. We'll post them in there so you can and for anyone else to post them because I think that'd be kind of hilarious to see what's out there in the community. All right, let's move into the news. Uh, the first news we have this week is. The Tale of Horus Traver gets a premium upgrade. That's right. For a thousand gems, basically ten bucks, uh, you get all premium cards from the set. And so and plus you get an avatar of uh Tavrod himself. So um if you like that, if you want premium, if you want the avatar, thousand gems, ten bucks. There you go. And cool. So, also I think yeah. if you've already crafted the cards premium, you get a dust refund on them. I believe you're right. I believe yep, you're that right. That is correct. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. So if you just had to have your premium Tavrods back when uh, back when Tavrod Armory was a thing, back when Argentport Midrange was the best deck in the format, uh, um, now you can finally get refunded for those. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that, that's it right there with that news. Um, this all got dropped yesterday, so I'm just going to kind of throw you it You guys going to get it? You guys going to buy it? I hmm. probably will. Um, I'm not like... I'm not like Sifu Danny. I need to have every single card that I own premium, but uh, it's. I think it's a really cool thing. I like the avatar a lot. I don't have a ton of avatars, so I'll probably get it even just for the for the Tavrod avatar. I, I'm curious to see what his uh, what his <laughs> what his voiceover stuff is. What he's saying in the when you like attack and his different emotes and things like that. So, wait, did the premium avatars make a sound when you attack? Uh, well, there's like, I doesn't the Oh, the the Nixotraxian one have like a special thing that he says when you attack with him. Oh, I don't know. I never play with sound on. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know it. Maybe... That's go ahead. <laughs> no, if that's a thing. I just I, this is the first I've ever heard of it because I never hear game sounds. And maybe I'm just making this up, but I'm I'm pretty sure that that's the case. That they have different things that they say and do. Oh, let's go, baby. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's move on to our next news topic. <laughs> <laughs> The, we have a new event this coming up this weekend. Uh, Herald's Cry. This is where all multi-faction cards cost one less. So yes, Zalchi, Peaks, everything that is multi-faction, multiple influences, costs one less. To enter the event, it costs 3,000 gold or 250 gems to enter. Each run consists of seven wins or three losses and award a minimum three packs of Defiance. The, begin, uh, the event begins on this Friday, January 25th through January 27th. Your first three runs will determine your uh, position on the event leaderboard. Uh, it's, I mean, if you just want to mess around, it's fun. You, you're you you're basically paying for three packs you're going to get anyway. So it's uh, you know, you're not really gambling anything. You you mean you have a chance to get more free stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. So I, I, I'm interested to try this out. I know some busted things will go on. So. <laughs> I yeah, think I am, rock in this format is going to be Rakano Agro. It's going to be so fast. I am super excited for this event. Like, I think this is going to be one of the most degenerate things that you see in Eternal. Did you play the last time they did this? This is the I, second time they've run this event. I did not. Uh, I, I wasn't sure because you're newish, so I wasn't yeah. sure if you were around when they did it. No, but uh, between all of the new stuff and someone's going to have to like, like, Confirm this for me, but aren't cargos considered multicolored and multi-faction? Yes. So mm -hmm. they're just free? 
Yeah, that's actually I had not considered that. That's actually insane. Okay, just just so everyone, <laughs> everyone listening to this podcast is on the same page. Um, there you go. <laughs> that's actually crazy. I had not even thought of that. That's buck wild, actually. Free mm-hmm. seek powers. Yep. I like free, that. Um, I like free that. spell triggers. <laughs> oh my word! Oh my word! This is all of this is gross. So, uh, cradle costs two now. Mm. What is so? What what is the de- first deck you're gonna do a run with? And 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 run? Um, the first deck I'm gonna do a run with will probably be like an FTP moment deck that just plays all of the seek powers. You have Bren, which now costs one, and now your seek powers also cost zero, so you get to trigger them for zero every turn, which are basically just rituals. Um, so yeah, look, uh, look for things like, I don't know, turn three howling peaks, look for things like <laughs> a, a, a moment on turn four for like six, for like six sixes. That's so um, hot. Oh my word. That's going to be the very first thing I do. Um, I also think that something like haunting scream is really cool because now it brings back five drops that cost, that cost five before. So you have things like bloodthirsty brawler, the four, six overwhelmed berserk that it can bring back. You have things like hmm. uh, oh. like Sill, the unblockable uh, Stone Scar card with Pledge that it can bring back. Um, oh, yeah. My mind's just like <laughs> going crazy. Uh, Tor- <laughs> Torgov Sight costs one, so you can play a Sight on turn one. Uh, this is going to be absolutely insane and, and incredibly degenerate. The Call of the Ancients tokens cost one now, so they can be fetched with Crown Watch Press Gang. That's pretty awesome, too. <laughs> wow. I had not thought of wow. that, but... There's some that, that, that is not an original BB idea. That is a uh, somebody in my stream chat said it yesterday. I, th- I believe it was Rick Kenner. That is a that is a gross idea. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, I I'm looking forward to that. I think I'll be going something, of course, multi faction. You know, three colors. Just just trying to be degenerate as well, possible. I'm probably gonna run mono time out. Mono time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go for, like, straight fire influence, you know? Just, you know, burn. Anyway. All right, let's move on here. Uh, the next thing we have is we have a new promo card. That's right. We have Star Reader uh, Severin. Uh, it's a uh, two-cost, uh, one shadow influence, two-one. And it has, basically for the text, it has, uh, if you have the, uh, if you have five shadow influence, it says, when you play a relic, play Severin from your void with plus one, exhausted so basically you can recure this thing every time you play a relic if you have the shadow influence uh um requirement and so there's also for 300 gems you get the avatar of this card too uh so if you want that but anyway what do you think about this card i can only think of like hilarious meme ways to use this card and i cannot think of a good way to use this card what about hmm. you, Ed Rouch? I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, <laughs> I I think the design is really cool. Um, I think the shadow influence it takes to bring it back is a little too high to make it like really busted. Um, it also requiring a relic where like the relics that you play and constructed just aren't fantastic. So like I want when I think of a recursion card that costs like this, I want something that comes back over and over and over again where you can. You know, bring it back with ease, and this is just a little too hard to bring back. Yeah, I think it'll see, yeah, I think it'll see some play. Um, basically, when people are trying it out, there might be some very niche decks that play it, but for the most part, I don't think this is going to make as big of a splash into the format as some of the other promo cards that I've seen play. Sure. Yes, uh, yeah, Svetya, yeah, uh, it is not, but um, probably a little better than Jesta. The flavor is nowhere near just a, but no. um, I, I, the only thing I could really think of would be like some kind of film deck with like pitfall trap and the rat one. What's the rat one called? Rat cage. Rat rat cage. Yeah. Is and the new, like, huh? Is the, is the new promo an elf at all? It's a, it's a, a mage, okay. which is like, there's only like two other mages. Hmm. Um, so, but with that card and like Savagery, you have like a, uh, eventually a Mega Don Walker, maybe, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's where I'm at with building that deck. I think I'd be more interested if it gave like 
plus one attack, plus one defense too. Like you could give it a little bit more uh, buffing on that end. So I don't know. I'm interested. There's people, there's friends of mine that are brewing with this. They, you know, some are saying like, oh man, this card could be really busted. I'm like, well, show me how it can be. I just, I'm just curious. You know, I'm like, I'm yeah, trying to, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think of ways and like. I'm like, you know, I'm not a deck builder by any means, but I'm like, show show me, you know, I need to, I need to see it to believe it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Savagery itself is probably the reason why this card has to be exhausted when you mm. play it. True, um, true. It's just kind of like the whole Dawnwalker thing with Killer and everything. It comes back exhausted. It's just, you got to do yeah. stuff like that because Dawnwalker at a time was busted at one point. It really. probably still wouldn't even be that broken um, just because the setup for it would be insane. <laughs> but I guess it would feel bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, let's move on here. Any last words about Star Reader? I'm interested to try it out, but I don't think it'll be meta defining or anything. But I'm glad they're giving us free cards. So yeah, yeah, enjoy. Have fun with it. All right, let's move into uh, the ETS top eight that happened this past weekend. This is where our famous bassoon buffoon was playing in this event. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you take it this way, Bassoon, uh, cause, you know, you, you were playing this, what did you see, what did you think, and then, uh, and Roush jump in too, so, go ahead, Bassoon. Um, yeah, I did get top eight, I ended up tying for third. Um, so close, I played, man, so close. I'm gonna get one of these Dude. dang tournaments eventually. We're gonna cancel gonna all so- guests, and it's just gonna be about you if you get first place, man. We're just gonna, like... <laughs> It'll be a solo shoe just talking about you, Laurels. You know, there we go. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I didn't see the same deck twice this tournament, which was kind of sick. Hmm. Um, played against, like, a very wide variety of things. The The meta was mostly... I, I made the correct call. I played Kennedans, And for the most part, I played two aggro decks, but for the most part, the meta was play the biggest thing as quickly as you can. And Canadan says, like, don't mind if I take two of those. So yes. um, that's a, a I, I made a good call into that. Mm-hmm. Um, the meta is no longer that, and uh, Canadan's is bad again. But um, <laughs> um, so, so some of the things I was looking <laughs> at your deck, man. Okay, just real quick. You have the combustion cells, all four main, none in the sideboard. Like, I kind of like that. I can't put them in the sideboard because I have a black market. Oh, that's right. Okay, never mind. I was in the just like... <laughs> I just saw so the two big changes on the deck that we made. So we have the Elvish Swindler in the market because it's mm-hmm. a black market. We can't have Combustion Cell in there. So we pull yes. the Elvish yes. Swindler out. It pulls a Relic, cost two or less. It's a five-cost unit. And um, it is it is a slower, um, less consistent, but the black market is so much better than the normal market that you have to do it. You're priced into doing it. I like the Torrential uh, Downpour in it. That is... I like that. Yeah, torrential downpour Real plus power. the spell damage, uh, the mm-hmm. spell damage uh, smuggler is your best anti-aggro tool. Mm-hmm. Um, the other big innovation that we had in the deck, um, my my beautiful baby boy son Zyreth in my Discord suggested that we try um, second sight in the deck um, to generate more value from our fate draws uh, with Jotun Hurler with the snowballs and. Zo with the treasures. Um, and other than Torrential Downpour, um, I think Snowballs are so important to what the deck wants to be doing because it takes so much pressure off your torches. It takes a ton of pressure off the aggro matchups. Um, and uh, um, Snowballs are like just some of the best. Uh, it's, 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 generating multiple Snowballs is like one of the best anti-aggro strategies in the game. Um, so, some people are very mad at me for not running Strategize, um, and I, the, the idea is that it's not objectively better than Strategize, that are the, um, in fact, a split is probably what's correct, but, um, the, the game I thought was gonna be slow enough, and that, uh, Snowballs are that freaking sick that when, Second side is bad, it's like pretty bad, but when it's good, it's really good. And I just thought the upside was better than the downside. Do you think that uh, that because of how good second sight was for you, that you want to even go up to like a fourth hurler or more zoes? I would go up on hurlers before I had zoes. The problem is I'm just so stressed for space in the deck. 
I want I want the fourth seek power. I want another Jotun hurler. I probably and I want probably a third Zoe and a third Howling Peak smuggle or Howling Peak. And there's just not room in the deck. I want seven market slots. <laughs> like the deck the deck can be much like FJS, I think Kennedans can be teched to beat most like metas. You just have to be smart enough to call what the meta's gonna be beforehand. And I'm not <laughs> usually. <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could run you know, if I could run all all four second sites and four strategize and hurlers and zoes, um then I might. Cool, cool, cool. Anything else? To, I mean, we had a couple of Haunted Highway back in here, um, which I understand that too, because you can just steal threats too and use them against your opponents and everything. But um, I like the AP mid-range deck. That's kind of cool looking. And then the, uh, the Notorious GHP bringing the uh, Combre ramp deck. I think that was kind of cool with the uh, four modders chains and everything and uh, just, to, just to go big and everything to take out opponents but anyway ghp is one of the most confusing players in the world to me sometimes <laughs> because <and> both. <laughs> he <laughs> we can get into that if you want buddy we might get into that later <laughs> all right the the, the 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 confusing thing about ghp to me is that he is a a devotee he worships at the altar of haunted highway he is honestly one of the better haunted highway players in the history of this game he's he's very smart very good this meta was like if I played if I ever played Haunted Highway, I would be like, yeah, it's probably time to bring out the Haunted Highway. But I don't play the deck very much. I'm not good at piloting it. And it's pretty hard to pilot. Um But uh so I, I, I never even consider when I'm thinking about what meta I'm going into, I never even consider Haunted Highway because I'm bad at it. But this was like the perfect week to bring Haunted Highway. Your GHP chomping at the bit to be like you know, a, a, a purebred, a thoroughbred winner, and you play Combray? That's baffling to me. It's it's stunning. <laughs> like 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 Haunted Highway. When I saw the two the the two copies of Haunted Highway both top aided, um, it was the perfect week for a slam dunk pick, and uh, <laughs> GHP brought Combray. It was I I was baffled. Oh man, oh man. But I, I enjoyed it. it. What are you guys doing in the Rank Star Labs over there? Navalis? Oh, you know, somebody's like, asleep at the wheel. You know, I'm kind of like not part of that, so I have no clue what they're doing over there. You know, do you, you know? not have access to like the competitive back channels? Uh, like there, I realized I did. I just like you know because they're like talking about decks, and I talk to them about decks, but I'm like you know I'm like where's the channel for the decks, and I see that I'm locked out of it, so I need to talk to them, being like guys, let me in. Like I I know I don't play DS, but you know I like to see what's going on here. So I don't know what's going on there. They. They come up with weird stuff, and I see stuff they post, and I'm just like, really, guys? Okay. But anyway, but they're they're good teammates. They're, you know, notorious. You should have played Haunted Highway, man. You would have. Anyways, back to me. I'm okay. sick. I'm smart. <laughs> uh, I only lost because I was incredibly unlucky, and uh, I'll see I'll see you chumps next week. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, enough about me. Yes. Let's let's talk about someone else. Let's talk about our guest. Here we let's go. Talk about me. In <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's on you now. We're just gonna talk. You know. Uh, tell us about yourself, your card game history, when you started playing Eternal. Then we'll jump right into our topic. So. So. Go for it. Yeah. Um. I've been my card game history. Essentially, I was a Magic player for the longest time. I started playing Magic in 1996. Uh, and have pretty much been playing ever since then. And I mean, that's 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 a lot of uh, a lot of card gamers' backgrounds, right? Like most, I think most have started playing Magic, so there isn't too much difference. I would I would consider myself like a reasonably uh, competitive Magic player. Uh, I never like played on the Pro Tour or anything like that, but um, I. Top aided like a few like the old PTQs during the old PTQ system. I have a Star City Games um, open win in 2011, and at that point I started dating my then girlfriend, now wife, and we were at Gen Con and learned the World of Warcraft card game. And I transitioned from Magic into that. Uh, had a lot of success in that game, and then when that game died out, to bring out Hearthstone. 
was looking at other gaming options for like the next three years or so and eventually stumbled upon Eternal this past Gen Con, tried it, took advantage of the Twitch Prime deal thing, and I've been playing since. So, yeah, I've really only been playing Eternal for, what is that now, six months, roughly? Six, seven months? Let's go. And, you, and you've had a lot of success in the time that you played. You got, like, top three at one of the ECQs. Yeah, a, a little bit of success. Um, I don't play in a lot of the like ECL and ETS tournaments just because my schedule, my work schedule doesn't allow it. Um, so I don't, I, there's been like not as much recognition there because of that, because my name's not out there or didn't really get out there because I wasn't playing in tournaments until the ECQ, the first ECQ that I top forward playing the eight merchant Skycrag deck. And that really kind of like, Blew, blew my name up, so to speak. Um, also, I do have to give some credit to uh, Grimfan when he was on uh, this podcast and he had his awesome dad streamer segment. He mm. was the he was the first to like kind of plug my kind of plug my stream and, and plug me as well. So um, I had I actually not really heard of your stream until that. I I don't think most people most people did. I was used mm. to streaming for like six to ten people at that time and then uh um he gave me a nice big plug on on this podcast and things just have kind of grown since then and grim is yeah. grim is like secretly like a very good curator of like the the smaller streams that like don't have very many viewers mm -hmm. he like he has like a, a weirdly deep knowledge of like the lore and quality of like the 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 10 to 20 viewer streams and he's, he's uh, and it's such a huge boon to the community having someone like him uh, that does that does that. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, for sure. Shout out to Grim Fan. He's sick. He's yep. awesome. 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 Well, let's, let's jump, jump right, right into, into our, our topic. topic. Okay. <laughs> what, what what do you want to talk about, about in Rush? Rush? Tell us. So, so <laughs> this this game here, <laughs> I, it it baffles me sometimes, and. Uh, coming from an extensive magic background, there's like these things that you just don't do in card games, right? And yeah. um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, these combos that are, so to speak, these combo cards in Eternal. And um, trying to trying to bring the fire here today. I want to give a disclaimer, though. I need to give a disclaimer starting off because okay. this is this is all in good fun. All right, this is something fun that I wanted to do. Please don't send me death threats. Please don't send the podcast <laughs> death threats. These send me are... send me all your death threats. I want to know exactly how you're going to kill me. I don't want to hear anyone blowing up Reddit and this guy's an idiot. Why is he talking about this? Please don't. This is all in good fun. And uh, I guess I guess with that. So I, I, I do want to about... ask. These are all combos you've seen people on ladder playing, correct? Yes. These these are all combos that I have seen on ladder that I've seen decklist posted on Eternal Warcry and in many times multiple deck lists and multiple people playing these playing these combos of cards and so my topic today is the top six i guess we could do top five with an honorable mention but the top six eternal card combos okay <laughs> and the first one the first one number six and i gotta pull up my page here my no my notes on this thing my extensive <laughs> notes you go ahead. I'll, I'll pull them up on the, the screen the, as you go. go. All right. So the, so the first one is In Cold Blood plus Justice. <laughs> oh, and an iconic duo. An iconic an iconic duo. Now, I haven't been playing since In Cold Blood has, has been around the, the full time. But I did a quick search on Eternal Warcry. Mm -hmm. And since Set 4's release, there are 19 decks on Eternal Warcry that have In Cold Blood and Justice <laughs> in the same deck. And, and Four uh, of those decks have it in the main deck. Explain to <laughs> explain to the listeners who, if they're newer to the game, what does In Cold Blood do? Okay. Oh, sure. So, so In Cold Blood, it's actually a very, very powerful card. Uh, it it costs four, and what it does, it's it's in shadow. I think it's double shadow influence needed to play it, and yeah. it destroys a, a creature. Uh, excuse me, it destroys a unit. What are these creatures we're speaking of? <laughs> <laughs> it just. It destroys a unit, and um, then if it was Justice, the enemy player discards each copy from their hand and deck, and then they can't leave the void. So it basically gives them void bound. So like, you hit an Inquisitor Mocto, and they're all gone. You hit a Merchant, 
uh, or a, uh, a smuggler and they're all gone. Very powerful. But then there's a little little line on there that people seem to neglect. And it says, you lose all justice influence. So that's <laughs> if you're playing justice, all that influence is gone. So like, yeah, I'm going to play an In Cold Blood and then I'm going to follow up with like a Rizon. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm going to follow this up with a Talut. No, you're not. It's not happening. So I've actually encountered this combo twice in, in the wild. Um, the first time was like shortly after it came out. It was an Argent Port mid-range deck. They played in Cold Blood. You see them mouse over their cards and realize that their justice influence is gone, and they had not read the card completely. And then yeah, they that they it. that they just can't play their Amelie the next turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second time I've encountered this combo was actually like a month ago. Um, it was pl I was playing against uh, Justice Primal Shadow Unitless um, and just like hard control deck. Like, had Mokdos, had Harbingers, um, and had In Cold Bloods. And, uh, it was, um, they played their In Cold Blood on one of my units. I did not play around it. And, uh, they lost all their justice influence and became Felm temporarily, and they stuck it out. <laughs> they, like, played the okay. rest of that game. It was oh. pretty impressive. Okay. They did not win that game. <laughs> but, uh,. See, I just I just have this dream against those style of decks, right? Where like you run out some units and then one gets in cold blooded, they lose all their justice influence, and then you flood the board with a bunch of different stuff so they and then they just can't harsh rule you afterwards <laughs> and you win because well, they lost all their justice influence. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's great. But I think the community's learning a little bit because since set five, there's only been six decks on Eternal Warcry that include both of these. That include both of these things. <laughs> uh, the and it's only the in the market. Yes. And it's only in the market. Sometimes uh, you people... need an escape valve. That is that is true. And sometimes it costs you everything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Yep. So, all right. What What is our next combo? All right. Number five is... Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about Zo, um, Because it's an incredibly powerful card. But one of the things that makes it so powerful is all of these little synergies and little advantages you get from playing it, right? Like, you get the treasure trove that's colorless that you can use in any deck to help smooth out your, smooth out your power base. Or, you know, you have something to do on two on your control deck. You get an extra card that you can discard to hand size you can discard it to or, or put it back with second sight or strategize you can put it away with the market um, you can get it back out of the market um, if you have the right merchants which brings us up to number five which is <laughs> zo plus non-fire merchants <laughs> so once once you take away all of these little synergies zo's just like not great like it's a giant idiot six six <laughs> that you that may just get permafrosted or annihilated and things like that and once you take away all those little synergies the card's very fair so why would you want to take away those things just just make zo the best thing that you can do <laughs> <laughs> just just make it good and so um i'm gonna probably pronounce this wrong but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna poke a little fun here and please don't please don't send me death threats but um I think it's joked or 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 jocked. Uh, took FTP um, not only to the top ten of Masters, but also second in the ECL last Sunday. Uh, and his most recent version plays eight nine non fire merchants along with Zo. So <laughs> um, okay. the, the guy, he's he's clearly good, right? Like he clearly knows what he's doing. This is something, and I'm just poking a little bit of fun here. Uh, it's all in good fun, but that is probably not a decision that I would. That I would come to playing, playing Zo with non-fire merchants. I, th I think you lose a uh, a, t a ton of value by, yeah. by doing that. Exactly. Okay. And you don't need to play eight fire merchants. You don't need to play Ixton plus Howling Peak Smuggler. Like it is if one of your merchants is fire, that's totally fine because you put it away with the non-fire one and grab it with your fire one. But once you lose that little bit of something that you can do that you lose like a few percentage points in matchups and things all right, like that. Alright, alright, I, I have the tech. Okay. You have the Aurelian Merchant, Great Valley Smuggler, you have eight Merchants main deck. Mm -hmm. You put one Howling Peak Smuggler in your market. When you put the Zoe, you put the Zoe 
You put the yeah, yeah you this put, is getting complicated. You put the, the Zoe back. You grab the Howling Peak Howling. Small. Yeah. yeah. You play the Howling Peak Small and get your Zoe. Uh, you know, I am all for merchants in the market. <laughs> so I am 100% on board with this. And this is probably going to be my next thing. Let's go one deeper. Let's put a Howling Peak Smuggler and an Ixton Merchant in the market. So we just have chaining three drops to our seven drops. So turn three, it's Merchant. Turn four, Merchant. Turn five, Merchant. We have to skip six, and then we can play our Zoe that we got back out on turn seven. Oh, sorry, buddy. While you were saying all that, Hojan <laughs> killed you, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just Semantics. <laughs> just thinking about a strategy that slow lost you a game. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, let's move on to our next one. <laughs> all right, the next one is Sandstorm Titan. And this card combos with a ton of cards in Eternal. There are so many good cards that you can put with this. But the best thing to combo with Sandstorm Titan is more flyers. Just, of include, just put this in flyers in your deck. Again, we see FTP with Zoe and Zal Chi in it, right? There's nothing I like better than having a Zoe in play and needing to continue to play things because my opponent is also playing cards <laughs> and follow it up with a Sandstorm Titan. Um, that's just great. That's just good deck building. Uh, now, I, I I will argue with you a little bit. The, the well goes deeper than this, but just initially Sandstorm Titan, Zoe, Zal Chi... I think those cards are independently good enough on like in a vacuum that it's okay to run all of those in the same deck. I I I, I, I tend to agree there. Like those cards are all by themselves, and Zalchi does need to entomb, and a lot of times games will be over before it entombs. So like I can give I can give a little bit of forgiveness there. But let's, However, let's, go, let's one, go deeper. Yeah, let's go one step deeper, right? Okay, let's do it. So <laughs> what if we also add in Thunder Dragon? Which um, is another like okay card, okay, um, to to go with our Sandstorm Titan. You know, uh, there's nothing I like more than getting to an end game, wanting to fly over my opponent, and not being able to do that. Even one step closer than that is Clutch of Talons. So now we're gonna go out of our way to give something flying, <laughs> only to have it be brought down by our own Sandstorm Titan. <laughs> Let's go Sandstorm Titan flying. There we go. Yep. That's what we yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But we can still do better than that. We can okay. still okay. do okay. better than, okay. than Thunder Dragon and uh, and Clutch of Talons. We have Valkyrie Enforcer. Which, well, it can uh, silence your Sandstorm Titan. Right. So, like, we can play Sa Valkyrie Enforcer on turn three, all right? And then when we want to attack in the air the following turn, we can play our Sandstorm Titan. And then we realize that we just messed up and need to silence our own sandstorm titan so we we play another valkyrie enforcer <laughs> okay yeah oh, so th th that's that's synergy right there but the best thing the absolute best one i saw was elder's feather <laughs> we, we are, we're a cambrai aggro deck right and we want yeah. the whole we want to get over top of all of our opponent's things so we can put elder's feather on our units and uh, fly over top until we play our own Sandstorm Titan, and then our plan falls apart because all of our little district infantries now get blocked by everything our opponent's playing. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> but okay, okay. I, I suppose I suppose you could also like if you you could just play an unseen commando too, right there. Like we gave our Sandstorm <laughs> Titan flying. Now it has two battle skills, and we can get the extra plus one plus one. Now you're swinging for a, for a seven seven, idiot! Yeah. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. man. Please. Now, okay, people on Reddit complain about how every time there's a good combo deck, Direwolf Digital nerfs it into the ground. <laughs> I, I want to see those those complaints are no more. This is this is an excellent combo deck that we have just unearthed mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Combo Combray. That's it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, well, what's the next thing we can see that you've seen on, on your climb to Masters? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so number three. I think number three is my favorite of the list. Um, but this is, I call this the Huru, the Huru Synergy Ball of deck building, okay? <laughs> <laughs> These are all just really good Huru cards, but, um, there's, there's a little bit that doesn't, that, that doesn't quite gel here. So, um, you're gonna have to follow me on this one. So, let's, let's start off with some great Huru cards. We got Huru Pacifier and Dusk Raider. Dusk Raider is one of the best two drops in the game, <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. right now. I think only, only surpassed by Hojin at this point. So, uh, well, what are some other good Horu cards that we can play? Well, we can play H Uruk Runehammer, which has an awesome synergy with Horu Pacifier, as well as awesome synergy with our Dusk Raider, you know, pinging our own Nightfall, getting rid of our Runehammer the following turn. So, 
Well, if we can't play Rune Hammer, then we need to play something that can sweep the board earlier that doesn't kill our Horu Pacifier. So let's play Hailstorm. But wait a minute, Hailstorm kills our Dusk Raider, so we need something to like reduce the damage of Hailstorm. So then we play Storm Tamer Operative, which doesn't combo well with Hailstorm. So we need to make these bad cards good. So let's play Genev Merchant in our deck, which by the way also dies to Hailstorm. Now we need to make our <laughs> Merchant better. So let's play a card like. Jotun Hurler, what, wait, that doesn't combo well with our Storm Tamer operative. Uh, so <laughs> let's make our merchant even better by playing Cutch of Talons. But wait, we can't play that because of Horu Pacifier. So now we need more units to put our Clutch of Talons on so we can play Hojin, which also triggers the Renown uh, to ramp us up to Talut, but we can't play the units from, or we can't play the the gem blades from Talut because we have Horu Pacifier. So let's play Vanquisher's Blade to also trigger the Renown on. It's just a it's just a giant mess. It's just a. Giant this is a mess. real deck. All these cards are in one deck somewhere. Not all of these cards, but you could pick Ooh. any five of these cards, five or six of these cards to go together, <laughs> plug them into Eternal Warcry, and the deck exists. I swear to God, it exists. Mm, let's go, baby. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm gonna be searching for this afternoon? See if there's. I'm actually just gonna make this deck and put it on there and put like you know top 100 masters and just like <laughs> yeah, just take all of these cards, throw them together into one deck, and take yeah. it there. Oh, oh, man. My favorite is that Storm Tamer Operative plus Hailstorm still kills Dusk Raider. Yep, still does. Also kills Genev Merchant. <laughs> also kills Hojin. <laughs> oh so my word! You oh, need word. you need three Storm Tamer Operatives in play, <laughs> but it doesn't. So you can it doesn't kill your own Storm Tamer Operative. So your so your uh, so your snowballs are still going to do zero, and your sweeper that you want to kill your opponent's stuff doesn't kill them because it's only doing two damage. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, what what is our next combo here? All right, no, number two, number two it all revolves around the card Harsh Rule. And this is one of the best combo cards in the game. And the best thing that you can combo this with is 30 plus units in your deck. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's awesome. There's nothing better in this game than playing a, dr a drop on two, a drop on three, a drop on four, and then using your harsh rule to kill all of your own stuff. I have actually seen decks go Oni Ronin, Champion of Glory, Whirling Duo, something on four harsh rule yep. that's happened to me yep that this and for some reason people like to do this um <laughs> i've seen i've seen Rakano decks that play a harsh rule in the market and the justification is like well what if i get in a bad position then i need to then i need to grab my harsh rule and kill the board if that happens you're already dead you already lost you gotta spend eight power you gotta spend eight power and a dude to go get a harsh rule and wipe the board. If you get to that point, man, you just lost. That harsh rule could have been <laughs> literally any other card that could help you win the game, and instead you just decide to throw it all away by, uh, so by true. playing like, harsh rule in your Oni Ronin deck. I was playing against uh, um, a Winchess or, uh, you know, the Fire Justice Primal deck that... And I was just like, or, uh, Fire Fire Justice Shadow, and like they're playing minion, 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 and I have like two minions. They have three or four minions, and they play Harsh Roll, and I'm sitting there like, why? Like that was my first question. Like you had more minions than me. Mine were a little bit bigger, but why? Like all right, I have I have two questions for you, Navalis. Yes. Did you have stuff before the Harsh Roll? Um, did you have stuff on the board before the harsh rule? Answer yes or no. I had two minions. They okay, had, did they, you have stuff on the board after they harsh ruled? Yes, I did. Our, no, you didn't. It, no, 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 what no. You, <laughs> I, you mean next, no, you mean next turn, right? I play stuff next turn. They, they use their whole turn to play harsh rule. Then I put minions down and I was ahead on board. No, no, they oh. played a harsh rule. Yes. Was the board empty? Yes, it was. All right, then they won. You suck. <laughs> you had stuff and then you didn't have stuff. But they had they more got you. They had more minions. <laughs> oh man. This is a this is an argument I can't I can't win. Wow. <laughs> they got what they wanted out of that interaction is what yeah. I'm saying. Okay, then that if that's what they were going good, for, then sure. Good combo <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> that's just good deck building. <laughs> oh. oh man. Oh wow. Wow. All right. Well, so, what's your so, Go ahead. I was just going to say like don't please don't put harsh rule in the main deck or or even in the market of your of your Rakano decks that play like thirty plus units. Like just just don't don't do it, <laughs> please. Don't, for don't. for for your sake and for mine and BB's sake, 
<laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> also, don't play Rakano decks that don't win by turn three because there's no point. Oh, I I think that there are like some bigger Rakano decks that can do well, but no. If you're going if you're going into big Rakano, just play a third color. Just play that's just fair. Shadow. Just play Primal. Uh, and then you're playing an objectively better deck. Fixing is so consistent in this game that uh, just play three colors. That's fair. All right. What is the number one combo? The number one combo in Eternal, and you see it all the time. You even see it in some top decks, is Vara. You've and seen it, it on my stream. I have. I've seen it on a lot of people's <laughs> streams. I've seen it in decks that have uh, top aided tournaments. Uh, this is Vara plus cards with Aegis and Permafrost. All right, so this is this is a big bugaboo of mine. This is a this is a big big bugaboo of mine because like one of the like again, we, like we talk about all of these little things uh, in deck building and little and and synergies and things like that with Zo that that make the card good. One of the things that makes Vara good is being able to blank all of your opponent's Aegis. So why are you playing it in a deck with like 20 cards that have Aegis and you just get rid of it. You turn on all of your opponent's removals. I think one of the one of the best innovations in Feln Control and Feln Dex was uh, the, I believe, I think it was Tony G who played, uh, who won like the Invitational with the Feln Control deck that just didn't play Vara yeah. because he had Feast Caller, because he had Cobalt Waystone, because he had Permafrost, because, you know, just all of these cards that Vara just does not synergize with it. And he's like, you know what? This deck is better without Vara. So, like, why would you go back? And that deck was very, very good. I don't know how it is. In that deck was very, very good at the time. And why would you go back to, to playing these things that don't synergize in your deck? Now, Genev Merchant is, is I think, is a special case, right? Because, because it's so good at grabbing something from the market. So I can forgive, I can forgive a Genev Merchant plus Vara. Yeah. But if if you have four or five of these other cards that are Aegis in the same deck as Vara, that's that's totally wrong to me and 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 is just good deck building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow. beautiful. It's, now I will say caveat to this. Mm -hmm. I will say Felm plus Vara plus Champion of Cunning with none of this other Aegis stuff is a fine combo. It's not that big a deal. It's if, okay. If it's if it's Champion of Cunning nothing else from those from those cards, maybe Genev Merchant, but if it's just Champion of Cunning, you're not playing Cobalt Waystone, you don't have Permafrost in your deck. I I I can forget like I said, I can forgive like one of these cards in combination with Vara. Um, cuz Champion of Cunning like Turn five, a lot of the times it's not turned on, or you yeah. like your opponent has several turns to deal with the Vara, and if they don't, then you're just going to win the game anyways. Um, and then Champion of Cunning comes down later with with removal and things to protect it. But there will still be games. There will be a non-zero number of games where you lose because you don't have Aegis because of your own Vara. Here's what I'm saying, though. That's okay. Because you you're gonna if you if you are winning more games because of that than you're losing then isn't that okay then th then that is okay <laughs> then then that is okay but people people he's, he's... in eternal I don't know if it's every card game or just eternal people in eternal see like this this nonbo of just like Vara and Champion of Cunning and think like never ever in my life and then they see like the one game like the one game out of X that you lose because of it and they're like see I'm objectively correct now <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and I just I don't see it that way. I think I think you have to take like the calculated like yeah I'm gonna lose I'm gonna have like awkward bad plays some number or some percent of the time because of this. But I'm gonna win so many more games because those two cards are just independently very very good that like it's not that big a deal. But the 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 number of games it's it's not just that I'm gonna win more games than I'm going to lose having these two cards. It's that difference of games has to be greater than if you didn't have the combo. Like, if, if you're winning more games without the combo in the deck than you are with the combo in the deck, then I still think you just need to not have the non-bow. Like, th I that, think that, difference, that difference needs to be greater 
than this other sum. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I haven't played enough, like, Big Feln since, since all, like, all the new cards got changed to know if that's thing. I'm saying that is worth looking at. And if you come in my stream chat talking about lol champion of cunning plus Vara, I'm gonna I'm gonna ban your ass. Well, I'm getting banned then because I've done that multiple times. Any anybody who hits me with lul champion of nice champion of cunning ages, I'm just gonna time you out for 69 years. Yes, yes. All right, that was yeah. that was a great list of combos there. Um, Something we should all take heed of and listen to this advice. Go play all of them. How about that? Make our make our lives easier on ladder. No, I'm just kidding. All right. But yeah, yes. some, someone go build a deck with literally every single... And uh, yeah. make top ten of Masters and, and prove me wrong. Especially <laughs> that Hooter deck. Just, like, throw all those cards together. I want to see all of them together. And um, anyway, so thank you for, for bringing that, Narash. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was... It was quite enlightening. It was quite enlightening. All right, let's let's move on to our deck of the week. So, Enrosh wanted to bring this deck right here. Um, it's a, it's I want to say it's a controversial deck, but it's a highly popular deck to a point. I see it a lot. Yeah. Uh, just there. So I'm a I'm gonna run through the list real quick. I'm not gonna give card numbers if you want to. Just go on our link uh, of the show notes and look it up. But it is a mall deck. It has. Uh, Gloaming Wisp, Inch Initiative of the Sands, Snow Crush Yeti, Dusk Raider, Teacher of Humility, Whispering Wind, Geneve Merchant, Lethride Duststalker, Lunar Magus, uh, Sickleus the Burning Sand, has Permafrost, Winter's Grass, Begone, Equivocate, Maul, and then in the market, yeah, Permafrost, Equivocate, Haunting Scream, Crystal Eyes, and Maul. Now, there's a few cards I see that are, that are a little bit different than the standard list, so you want to. Enrosh, you want to talk to us about those? Sure, absolutely, I can do that. So this mall list is a um, is a derivative of a deck that myself and other people played for the last ECQ. Um, Sporky actually went into the got uh, he was second place going into the ECQ top sixty four. Um, and uh, we things have changed since then. Uh, Got to give a shout out to Delverino, who made number one with a derivative of this list. Uh, I think there's just a few cards different from where he's at, from where uh, from where I am at on it. But uh, yeah, this is this is a mall list, but it's a little bit different. And some of the spicy cards in it, the main one that sticks out is Whispering Wind. And we were looking for two different two drops because. Like, Nocturnal Creeper is, like, really bad. It just dies to snowballs. There's so many snowballs. Um, it, it just doesn't do a lot for what you're trying to accomplish. But Whispering Wind does. Uh, the deck draws so many extra cards because of Nightfall that you have, that you, it's very easily to get flooded or just have extra cards that you can't play. And Whispering Wind turns those into cards that you can play and cards that you want. Um, it doesn't die to snowball. It attacks in the air, so you can get in a little bit more chip shot uh, damage if your opponent uh, has bigger ground units. Um, in combination with Dusk Raider, it helps you find uh, Berserking Cicaluses, which is unbelievable for the deck. That's one of the mm. best things to it. Uh, and we get to clean up some slots in the deck and only play one mall because we can find it a lot easier uh, with Cicalus um, like by discarding that. a Cicalus and only grabbing the Singleton Mall. So that was a huge innovation for the deck uh, that has proven its worth. And I think Delverino is even playing four copies of Whispering Wind in his current mall deck. Hmm. I really like this cute tech you have of you have a haunting scream in the market. Mm -hmm. And the only way you have to get shadow influence is be gone and Diplo seals. Yep. That's so that's pretty hot. It, it is. Um, I got to give Sporky some credit for it. He's, uh, he's the player who made the top 64 of the last ECQ with this list. Um, and I don't know if it was his original innovation or if he saw a list with it in. But uh, it's very, very rare that you get Haunting Scream. Um, there's, yeah. there's, there's not a lot of times that you get it either because it's just not good in the situation or you don't have the shadow influence um, or there's just something, something better in your market that you can get. But Haunting Scream does something that no other card can do. It, it is, it's very unique. It can win you games that you have no business winning, getting back a Cicalus from it. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think, makes it, makes it deserving of a market slot. So it's very few, maybe one in 
20, 25 games that you're actually getting it from the market. But because it's so unique and does something no other card can do, makes it worth that market slot. I really like it, yeah. Especially if Cicalus has Berserk. That just mm -hmm. makes it really, really, really good. So... I have another, I have one more question about the build of the deck, the deck building decisions. Yeah. How often do you think that something like Entangling Vines would be better than Crystallize? Um, it, it could come up. The thing about Crystallized, though, is I think they're good in different situations. You are, the deck is already very good at, um, like, dealing with one unit or two units at a time with your cheap removal. And your yeah. cheap your cheap interaction crystallize is really there for like the mirror when you get into these gigantic board stalls um, and you need to stun a whole bunch of units at once so you can alpha strike through um, entangling vines still isn't very good in that specific situation and okay. I think I think the situations where entangling vines would be good um, a card like permafrost or equivocate is gonna be is gonna be just as good that makes sense okay that was just something I th I Whenever I see Crystallize in a deck, my first thought is, how could I not have Crystallize in this deck? Sure, yeah. But, and, and, <laughs> but that makes and, sense. And, and that slot has has flipped around a whole bunch. I've tried things like uh, Cerso in that slot for you just want like another big merchant. I played uh, Black Sky Harbinger. I actually played Black Sky Harbinger in the ETS. Um, another shadow card that you can only play off of your Begons and things. Um, cool. I've tried Torrential Downpour. Um, just a whole a whole bunch of different things in that. Torrential game. Downpour gets a lot more embarrassing when you don't have the spell damage. I it, understand it why that was removed. It does. And and the reason for Torrential Downpour is is the, the decks like Jekadins and Kennedins and things like that are such a bad matchup for this deck. And I thought maybe one of the ways that you could combat it is doing one to their board for cheap, but turns out that it's still a little too late uh, for it to have an impact. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's cool. a I, I like the changes in the deck. I, I like to, I look forward to seeing it. So with that said, let's uh, go to our our sign offs here. In uh, uh, Roush, where can they find you on Twitch, Discord, Twitter, all your places where they can contact you if they have you ask you questions about combos, mm -hmm. death threats. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, if, you, if you want to know everything else that I that I want to rant about in uh, Eternal, uh, you can find me on Twitch at uh, nrouch one. Uh, you can also join my Discord. Uh, I, you can find the link for that on my uh, Twitch page. And uh, I stream uh, pretty much every Saturday, or excuse me, every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. I'm not streaming tonight. I have prior commitments, but every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday night, uh, I'm on streaming, and you can so you can find me on Twitch there. Awesome, awesome. But soon, what about you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Human Venipede. It's the best tag on the website. Don't at me. Uh, you can follow my stream at twitch.tv slash bassoon buffoon. It's the worst tag on the website. Um, I stream most Sundays and then some number of weekdays. I'll be on Friday. If you're listening to this Friday when the VOD comes out, I will be on Friday morning. Cool, cool, cool. You can find me at what the deck HS on Twitter. You can find everything about From the Void Podcast on Twitter at From the Void Cast. You can go to our website, FromTheVoidPodcast.com. If you go there, there's a link that goes to our Discord. You can join it. We talk about the game and all kinds of other stuff. It's great. Uh, we have a sister cast here. Uh, you can find them at HeroPower underscore cast. They're all about Hearthstone. Uh, thank you all for watching. We're about to go into our play portion. But until then, we'll see, we'll see you next week from the Void. Later, everyone. Cool. All right. All right cool. So, which one of us is playing the deck? I can. Uh, I can do it. And Rush can do it. Doesn't matter to me. Um, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna get it started here. All right. Let's get this. Wait. What start? Yeah, I'm getting the game started right now. All right. I will. I'll. I'll play, and you can. You can back seat. Sure. Let's do it. Let me know when you're ready for me to queue, Nav. Yes, yes. We will wait a second okay. here. So, so the, the listeners will know, but if you don't watch the show, Enrouch, you, you don't know, is that we play three games. We have never, ever, ever gone 3-0. and It's never happened. 
Well, I'm so. sorry to say this is probably not going to be <laughs> another. <laughs> another uh, this is not going to be a three and the, the deck, I don't think, over the last week, there's been a lot more aggro showing up and in, um, in in rank. So I think I don't know how good of a spot Mull is right now. I'll tell you what. If I were gonna, I don't, I don't, I can't play in the ETS because I'm busy this weekend. But if I were gonna play in the ETS, you better know it would have Hailstorm in it. I th I think so. I I think the meta games finally come full circle. We're going big, 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 and now everyone wants to go back. So. I think that's a good All right, choice. I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what. There's so much anti aggro in the game, but the game got so stupid for a minute that, like, it was, like, not worth running the anti aggro. But yeah. now people have forgot that it exists. And that's. Now we have to punish those people. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm queuing right now. Ooh, a diamond one player. We get to gatekeep today, boys. Hey. What do you think of this this hand? Is this a keeper? Uh I think it is. Uh I think it's I think it's borderline, but I do believe that this hand is a keeper. Uh, I think if we didn't have the dust grader, I would pitch it. I, I would agree. Um Whispering Wind is super interesting here. Oh gosh, that's awesome. So now we get to uh now we get to pledge this Cicalus over over playing the diplomatic seal here. Um, the other thing that this hand has going for it is Dusk Raider plus Whispering Wind. Uh, so you're going to oh, be able yeah. to pitch one of the three drops and get a Berserking Cicala so long as this Dusk Raider uh, survives. Oh man, and Whispering Wind is also, or Gloaming Wisp is also now a uh, a card that you can play alongside your Whispering Wind on turn three to keep Ooh. Nightfall rolling. Hot. So, what's our game plan against Scream? Because generally, my theory is we probably just lose, right? It's not a great matchup because they have plenty of ways to pitch cards. Uh, the good thing is is that they are also night falling. So, uh, even if we run out of nightfall stuff, they're going to keep our hands full and keep their hand full. Uh, yeah. The, also, um, our interaction doesn't put things in the void. Like, we don't have straight-up hard removal. So, um, that's good. that they, they have to do the work to, to screen things. Can I swing? They're never blocking. Uh, I think you... Like, they're, they're literally never blocking. I think, given that we have Whispering Wind in play, they are going to block. Uh, okay, so maybe if, I should have swung, but first, if you, yeah, if you're gonna if you're going to swing, I think you need to do it before you play those units. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I don't want to give them scream, scream rapid shot anyway. Save the two damage. More deadly units. Oh, good and, lord! And savagery. All right. So this is going to be this is going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sick! Berserking snow crust yeti. All right. So, uh, what do we have in our market for this situation? Uh, crystallize might actually be decent in this. Maul's going to be terrible. Um, I think we need to get the lunar magus down this turn and start. I, yeah, I was going to play yeti lunar magus. I think that's good. Uh, the other option would be Permafrost plus Lunar Magus. Mm, well, this way, if they A-space, we... Hmm. I think I would prefer the blocker to the Permafrost. I'm not sure. Oh, goodness. All right, so they're going to use that to kill our Lunar Magus. Yep. a lot of savagery. <laughs> so what did they get from the market? Probably like a Rindra? Holy or... flood. Um, Man, Whispering Wind would be so good if it lived. Well, they have a rapid... I don't know if they have a rapid shot in hand, but they... There was a pause on their turn? I didn't I didn't see any pause on, I didn't, uh, on two. I didn't see the pause, but I haven't been paying attention to see if they would have given us the chance to... 
see the pause. You know what I mean? I might have I might have gone for crystallize there instead of grabbing the permafrost, and then you could still play the winter's grasp and keep nightfall going. Um, that'll allow you to get in an alpha strike later, uh, a few turns later. Or I don't know what an alpha is. strike it means. Uh, that when you means. when you attack with everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Wow. I've never drawn so much power. One of my concerns with this deck is that we uh we're skimping on power too. <laughs> in in the deck as a whole, we're only playing 25. Yeah. Well, that gets made up for by the fact that we have so much nightfall to draw into them. We also have well, initiate to to kind of cheat on power as well. Well, and it's all in the top third of our deck, and that helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was that far out of the market? I think it was. Holy Ooh. shit! Uh... All right, we're still okay though. If as long as we draw a. Uh, some like there's plenty of removal that we have. We could get. Well, that's not one that we want. <laughs> hey, there we go. Hmm. Man, what a what a bad draw. We just drew all that land. They're going to get 10 this turn. So that's... Oh, Begon isn't fast! Oh, oh no! I was wondering why <laughs> you are holding that. <laughs> I, didn't know. Nope. All right. I didn't know it wasn't a fast spell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was wondering no. why. I was like, okay, he has a plan for that. Okay, I was like... Yes. Okay. I was going to okay. pretend that one didn't happen. We're queuing another one. It's all good. It's all good. That never happened. We just <laughs> we we lost that game way before I didn't play yes, that yes, gun. Yes. <laughs> no, as soon as the whispering wind died, it, it it might have been over at that point. Can I keep this one? Oh shit! I gotta bring up the game. Yes, yeah, so this one's iffy. Leth Lethrai equivocate three power, but two wisps Leth Leth uh, a wisp two Lethrai's equivocate three power. Yeah, is it all the wisp. is it I'm all the right it. colors? Yeah, mm -hmm. power. Yeah, that's that sounds great. And a permafrost off the top, nice. All right, we're on the draw. That also kind of blows. All right, so if we don't draw a two drop that we can play, I think you want to play the seat on turn two and then follow up with wisp. Yeah, there is an argument to be made because we don't have any other that you want to save the Wisp until after the Darkstalker. Uh, I actually think I like that a little bit better. So just swing for one, play a power and pass. Now that they play a turn, if they play Vara, we have Equivocate up and we get to save the Nightfall for after the, the Darkstalker. Yeah, that's cute. I like it. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. This is not something we care about because it can't block. Yeah. So I would not, e I would not Equivocate that. What one cost? They have a minus tower. Okay. Okay. This also does not seem like a great matchup because they have lots of cheap things that they can do. Yeah. Hopefully, we're going to get enough chip division and then. They can. Yeah, and then, then maul them for a bunch. Mm hmm. Let's see here. Um, Smuggler. That's that a probably gets target. that probably gets Vanquish if I had to guess. Well, now I want to play the Equivocate because we have three of them. It does use the power a little bit better. You have to be wary of endurance units like Tavrod coming down, though. So I think we I think have three. I think them. you still want to save it. 
because it, because it is instant speed. So you can like if we get, we're definitely racing at this point, and we know they have a, a finest hour. Okay. okay. So I think saving it for fast for fast speed is is where you want to be. Damn it! Oh, it was defiance the whole time. Uh, you could equivocate your own unit nice. to save it, and it might be worth it because you have no other units to play. That's not a terrible thing to have. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. All right, we need a we need a merchant, a whispering wind, a cicalus, a maul. All of those are good draws. Ugh. Holy moly! Yeah. What is this terrible deck, dude? <laughs> I'm I'm assuming assuming you are having, having no luck with this deck right now. <laughs> if we, we just, just had another unit, unit though. Oh, man, this, this is, is like stinks. I think I just want the three-two body, and I don't need the value from the. I I agree. I agree. You, you got. got to... Yep, got to run that out. Holy moly! What is this pile of garbage you put on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> So the good, the cool thing that's happening here is that they don't have any shadow units in their void for when they play Vara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's Vara. Ugh. Oh, we got a... You got to send them back, right? To the hand? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sending the Vara back for sure. Um, and so now, do I be gone the Rista? And then I hold up Equivocate for the Hojan? I think there is holding... I think you hold up Equivocate for the... Um, definitely attack into it with the 3-2. I actually think you want to be gone your own uh, Wisp to Nightfall again. Oh, okay. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> Let's see what he does, huh? He's gonna let you all... Oh, wait, wait. Have you played Power this turn already? No, I have not. Okay, good. Okay, okay. okay so I be gone. Yeah, be gone your own Wisp. And now I just hold the Equivocate. Yep. Alright, come on. Let's... Holy moly. Play something else before attacking. Play something... Ah, damn it. Why would playing something else matter? Uh, because we'll get oh, priority, you and, then we can, and then we can equate the Tulu. Oh, uh, okay, you meant like a spell. I understand. Oh, my word. <laughs> and we're just dead here. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, 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 because they already attacked. Never mind. They've already right. swung. Oh, oh, oh. All right, how do we win this game? Um, oh, ah. Uh, we don't have any units in our void. Um, we could get Permafrost for the Talut, play Whispering mm -hmm. Wind. Um, or we can play them both to switch the power out for Maul. But then we have to hope... We hope that they don't go below six cards in their hand. I think yeah, that's unlikely. We are already in hope mode. I, I don't think we are yet. I think we can... So the other I think, option... I think we need to... I think, yeah, I think we play out Whispering Wind for sure. Um, then Do we merchant, merch, merchant for Permafrost, Permafrost the Tolute. The only thing that can attack is the, uh, is the Rista. We have... But the, Herald, the Whispering Herald won't be able to attack, right? Because if Rista attacks, it'll... it'll... True. 
But this oh, yeah. this at least put him at a lower life total in case we draw our singleton mall. Yeah. We've got and we got several turns to do it, right? Because our we're gonna have a lot of blockers here. Okay. All right, here we go. Um right, Okay. They have a right, random this... four drop in their hand that's going to come down. Okay. Hey, okay, that's not good. I think we did. Ah, if we just re mm. <laughs> Yeah, there's we don't really have any recourse. Yeah, what is this pile you've you've put before <laughs> me? This is I I have insane. not seen. Oh wow! Let's let's just play against a peaks deck next turn and redeem ourselves, or next game <laughs> and re redeem yeah, this. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, one more. I don't All think right. we've ever gone zero and three either. So no, no. We so we're, we're we're about first to... time for everything. <laughs> we're about to make history. So <laughs> not in a good way. All right, on okay. the draw again. Um, we have initiate, gloaming wisp, and two permafrost. I want a better hand than that. Uh yeah, I think yeah, you can yeah. throw that. You can you can be pretty aggressive with mulligans with this deck because Oh man, god, why can't we be on the play? So I do want to keep this hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, looks mm, Do I pledge? I I would cuz it's the only way you get double time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if only this power had been a seat. All right, come on, come on, torch it, torch it. Yes, okay. Huh, there's the time. <laughs> <laughs> We've done nothing but Damn flood man, in all these word. games. My word. Your deck sucks, dude. <laughs> You're the worst guest we've ever had on this podcast. Uh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yep. What is happening? More power. Oh my god! This is just turning into my shit. We hit with now. the teacher. Let's draw power. Let's see who we draw. Oh. Okay, alright. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's what really is an actual card. What do you know? We put real cards in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Sickleus was in here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I would have. Okay, that's fair. Oh, we got two begones here. Okay. What well, what would you have done? Uh, I was thinking that maybe you grow it, but without any interaction in our hand, that's probably the wrong play. I mean, yeah, I didn't know the begones were on top. Yikes. Ooh, that's good. Is it? Yeah. Ooh, permafrost. I mean, no. we still, oh, we still it. are... Nope. What? Uh, I think you wanted to permafrost and then be gone your own Darkstalker and replay it. Oh, that's cute. I didn't think of the cute place. This is the first time... Today's stream is the first time I've cast the card Be Gone, so... <laughs> I I didn't even know it was slow speed until 10 minutes ago. I made a mistake, because there's a card in Magic like Be Gone, but it's, a, it's like a fast spell. And so the first time I played Be Gone, I realized that I couldn't play it on my opponent's turn. I was like, what in the world? Like... 
Ah, those tempo decks. Gimme. Gimme that merchant. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Yikes. <laughs> oh, my word. Um, Seems about I just, right. like, wisp pass, right? Yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah. <laughs> oh. This game's still very winnable. Like, I don't think you're in a bad... If they ever make any attack with something, then... Yeah. Then then this is great. Yeah, just take six here and All right. hey. okay. So I I beak on the Titan and A space? It gets in for three. They clearly block the four four. Um or do I just go wide, empty my hand, and end my turn? I think you just go wide and um, don't play the be gone. Yeah. Because you need you need your opponent to like continue attack, mm -hmm. and, th and okay. then you get him with the limited number of removal spells that you have. And yeah, definitely don't play the power. All right. Oh no. This is going to be Azendel this turn. Do we know what they got from their market? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's... Oh, my word. Alright, kids. <laughs> what did we learn today? Um, <laughs> we learned after that all the, After all the FJS nerfs, uh, Maul is no longer good. <laughs> make, sure, make sure you play against the right matchups. Holy moly. Don't draw yeah, all your lands. <laughs> yep, yep, draw all of your power. Yes. This is the worst deck we've ever played! Oh my god, I've brought decks on this podcast that were literally a joke, Enrouch. This is... <laughs> Holy crap. I do think, so I do think if, if, we're, if we were to update the deck for the current way... Um, Backslash deletes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So delete the deck. I think we need the playset of malls in a game uh, as it currently is being played. Um, I I think I disagree with that because the matchups, like, the matchups where mall is good, you have infinite time to, to find them. And we didn't have infinite time this game. Well. That was looking like a mall game, right? That was, that was pretty well a mall game, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. We also didn't. We also didn't find Merchant or Whispering Wind, anything like that, to to help find them all. Oh, I wish God. there were like a way to run six Merchants in the deck, but there's not really. No, you can't. Mall is Mall is too important for the deck success. That like you either play you either play the 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 Black Market Smuggler and put Mall in the market, or you play like the way that it is now. Yeah. The, the problem with Maul is it's just such a bad top deck in the early game. Like you never ever, and you and it's it's terrible in multiples too. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go up to like two malls, and I've played two malls in inversions before, I think that's fine. But I think the meta game is in such a spot at this point that the deck is not that great. Like, okay, here's here's an idea: eight merchants, no malls in the market, four malls main deck. But you have so many merchants, you can just shuffle them into your market. <laughs> um, you can do that. I think you're still wanting to play... I think you still need to play Whispering Wind. I think... Let's see, what cards do you cut at that point to fit all of those merchants in? So you probably cut Winter's Grasp. I think that's the worst of your removal spells. Probably cut Snowcrust Yeti as well. Okay. I could get behind something like that. Uh, it's worth thinking about. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we might make a bad deck worse, but we could make it better. <laughs> it, it's it's worth trying. It's definitely worth trying. Uh, okay. Well, that was the deck. That was the show. That was uh, that was it. I love you, and I really appreciate that you were on the show. It, thank no problem. Hopefully, uh, yeah. thanks for having me. Like, any any time, like, any time you want me on, and which will never at this point since I give 
terrible deck building advice. <laughs> and uh, hey, hey, plug your stream. Plug your twenty four hour stream. Oh yes, uh, I forgot to do that. So uh, coming up February twenty third and twenty fourth, I am doing a twenty four hour stream. Um, it's for charity. Uh, it goes to benefit the Ronald McDonald House, which is a charity very near, very near and dear to my heart. They've been, um, they they've helped my family out directly a ton. Um, I, I guess a little bit of backstory on this. My sister just recently gave birth to twins, uh, fourteen weeks pre or uh, yeah, for, uh, was it fourteen? Yeah, fourteen weeks uh, premature. And that's a very, very long time and the health complications and everything like that. The Ronald McDonald House was basically a home away from home for my family um, coming and visiting her. And, and you know, in, in times of financial need, they were, you know, at least meals, uh, a, a warm bed, that sort of stuff. So uh, they're, they, they're a great, great, great charity. And we're going to raise some money for them. Um, on the February 23rd and 24th. Going to have a lot of guest streamers on. Uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff with uh, Tall Shark and Handsome. Going to be doing a stipulation drafts with Grim Fan. He's going to join me for it. And from the Void's own, Bassoon Buffoon is also going to join me for, for that. We're going to do a pauper tournament, and he and I will be commentating on matches. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, so open, open your hearts, open your wallets. We will see yeah. you in late February. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, and Roush, thank you for joining us. For soon, thank My you pleasure. for uh, uh, just being an awesome co-host. So, anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. See you next week.